Hello everyone, how are you doing? So I'm about to turn 50, which is a big milestone. I, how on earth did I end up at this age? I can't quite fathom it. So I'll talk about turning 50 in a moment, but what's happened as I've approached this birthday is I've been reflecting on previous big birthdays in my life and on some of the breakthroughs that I've had around those birthdays, which have often also come with a breakdown <laughs> to break through. But I'll start way back when I was 10. So um, that was a big birthday in that I didn't realise it at the time. But when I look back, you know, quite a lot had happened in the preceding um, months and year or two. So my parents had split up. Um, and around that time, I can't remember the exact age, but it was around that time when kind of, you know, parents split up, world fell apart. I thought it was my fault. Dad moved out. I've done something wrong, I'm not lovable. Um, my mum was having her own challenges, bringing up two children, her own struggles. How can I fix her? How can I help her? How can I support her? This was at the age of 10. And then, you know, moving house. So um, those of you who've experienced divorce, um, your, whether your parents divorced or you've divorced, you know, often, you know, the world ends for a moment so the everything changes so um for a child where we live changes so in my case we've been living in this nice big um uh semi detached i think house <laughs> with a lovely garden on a lovely street and um that was my family home and we moved we moved to a smaller house just with mum um we left my cats behind which you know, i'm only just realizing must have been quite heartbreaking um, because we discovered my brother had asthma and was allergic to cats. So um, the cats got left behind. So around about 10, my life changed in a big way. And already by then, I was finding alternative coping mechanisms to deal with my pain. So I'd already started um, messing around with my food, under eating, mostly under eating around then. The overeating became later, came later, but I'd been sort of messing around with my food, trying to get thinner, trying to get prettier. Maybe if I can control this, I couldn't control everything else, but maybe I could control my food and my weight and how I looked. And maybe if I was thinner and ate less, maybe I'd be more lovable and all those ideas that went through my head. So that was around the age of 10. At 20, um, I went to live in Spain my year out. I was studying at Oxford University, studying French and Spanish, and um, I went to Spain to teach Spanish. And if I think back then, um, turning 20 to 21 in Spain, um, you know, it wasn't a healthy time in my life. I was having a lot of fun on the outside, but, you know, on the inside, I was binge eating. I was overweight so I would say I'm probably I was probably two stone heavier than I am now if not more um I didn't love myself I wasn't treating myself with love and respect I was um harming myself so I was binge eating then compulsively exercising I was drinking all the Spaniards under the table I was smoking um I didn't like the way I looked I didn't look like this um I looked different and um yeah, well, I looked like this, but with a lot more weight. So um, I didn't like myself at all. Um, so that was around my 20th. And then around, um, but, but you know, I was struggling, but there wouldn't, there were, it, I, I didn't realise what I was doing to myself back then. But that came when I was turning 30. So I was living in Brazil. I was working as a foreign correspondent for the news agency um, Reuters and had a wonderful life in many ways. But I start, the cracks started to form and I started to see the truth about myself. And it was a slow process. But I started to realise, A, that I was binge eating and that I had a really crazy relationship with food, a very unhealthy relationship. And also that the romantic relationship I was in needed to end, which was really difficult for me. Uh, I loved him. Um, I'm still very fond of him. Um, He's a really lovely guy, but we weren't, it wasn't going to work. We weren't right together. And I knew that, but I was so afraid to end that relationship. Um, partly because I thought he wouldn't cope if I ended the relationship. 
I had this idea that he would fall apart. So I had to stay to sort of caretake, but um, actually, um, you know, once I broke free of that, once I ended that relationship, which took huge courage, and it was, I think, around my 30th birthday, something about that milestone helped me to stand, you know, just to stand tall and to find the courage to end that relationship. He was absolutely fine. Um, I was the one who was in a mess. I was, my relationships were all over the place. My eating disorder was was rife. Um, I was total workaholic, um, you know, working in news journalism, very busy, um, binging, starving, running, compulsively exercising. So that was my 30th. And then um, my 40th was a massive milestone. So um, a few years prior to my 40th, my dad died, um, which was huge. Um, I didn't really realise it at the time, but um, I think something broke in me in that I started to see the truth of my relationships. Um, I should say back at my in my 30th, I, I started looking at therapy for the first time ever. I was in Brazil. I didn't really know what I needed therapy for, but I took the lid off the Pandora's box and all these butterflies came out, um, actually quite dark butterflies, and I started to see the truth of um, my life. And um, that continued through my 30s, and then in my late, uh, mid to late 30s, my dad died. And I, yeah, something broke inside me. I started to see the truth, really, of how I was living, and that the job I was in, which then was political journalist, based in the Houses of Parliament, working for Reuters, one of my dream jobs, traveling all over the world, flying around the world with prime ministers, White House, Downing Street, Iraq, Afghanistan, Hong Kong, Spain, you know, tsunamis, earthquakes, those sort of things. Um, you know, a job that I had dreamed about. But what was happening in that job is that I was coming home from those massive events and feeling so um, lonely. I was on my own at home, um, there was no partner, I had no children, you know, I was grabbing food from the supermarket on the way home, I was eating it on the way home, um, I was so exhausted, and um, I still had this dysfunctional relationship with my body and with my health, and, um, and, and, and with the way I didn't love myself, and, um, you know, I quit that job. Well, I got, I, I burnt out and I broke down. I really did break down and um, reached out for support. Um, and from that breakdown, I broke through. So as I turned 40, I started writing my blog from 40 with love. I started sharing my truth on the internet, my vulnerability. I started sharing about, um, you know, my eating disorder, my dysfunctional relationship with food, my dysfunctional relationships, romantic ones and other ones. I started sharing about my workaholism. I started sharing about being 40, being single, being childless and thinking, how on earth did I end up here? Like so many of my dreams had come true. I had this fantastic career. I lived in this beautiful flat in London. I had friends and a great social life, but I woke up in tears. Um, how on earth did I end up here? How did this happen? This wasn't supposed to happen. I was supposed to have the career, but then find the partner, get married and have the children, um, which I know many of you will relate to because I work with a lot of women who have similar stories. So my 40th was a massive breakthrough in that I started writing my blog from 40 with love. I started writing articles about self love and self care for Psychologies magazine and started writing about childlessness in in the Sunday Times and in the Guardian, I went on Newsnight and um, it was massive. And I also started understanding that in order to find a healthy relationship, I had to change my relationship with myself and my patterns, which I had been doing, but I needed to look at more closely. And, um, you know, in my early 40s, yeah, I started to do things that I loved. I started to do camping and cycling and swimming outdoors and all those things that I really loved and um, changed my relationship with myself and as many of you know found love and um, so I broke down in order to break through. Um, I published my book in my 40s 
uh, my book, How to Fall in Love. And um, gosh, I got married at 48. And um, just um, a couple of months ago, so two months before turning 50, my mum died. Massive relationship, um, huge influence in my life in many, many ways. A complex relationship. Um, complex grief and getting quite emotional <laughs> talking about it. Um, yeah, my mum had her struggles and as a result of hers and as a result of her mother's struggles and multi-generational struggles, I have had mine and um, I have had so many opportunities and so much support to heal from my struggles and I have taken those opportunities. I have got support, I have um, sought out therapy, I have sought out coaching, I have spent my money on courses and I have invested in myself and my well-being. And um, losing my mum just before my 50th is really significant. Uh, I am turning 50 without children, I'm turning 50 without parents. And I'm turning 50 with a wonderful partner, a wonderful relationship. I'm also turning 50 with a book, How to Fall in Love, and with a 10 years worth of blogs, charting my journey of healing and recovery. And I am turning 50 with a novel that I am writing, um, which I'm absolutely loving. I entered it into a competition recently and I have several other books that I'm writing, and I am turning 50 with a heart-centered business, coaching women and men to transform their lives so that they can perhaps avoid the breakdowns, but just have the breakthrough. But if they do need to break down, that they are supported and held by me and perhaps by my groups or on my retreats, so that they can have their own breakthroughs in life, in love, in careers, in creativity, in joy and um, in their relationships with themselves primarily. So I just wanted to chart my journey through those decades, through those milestone birthdays and, um, you know, talk about my breakdowns and my breakthroughs and celebrate myself um, as I turn 50 and celebrate you who have watched this video. Um, perhaps you've been part of my coaching community or been on a retreat, or perhaps you would like to be part of my coaching community or come on a retreat or take one of my courses. Um, and if so, katherinebaldwin.com is where all the information is. But really, I wanted to share my heart with you. Um, some of my grief, and I won't go there because um, I really don't want to bawl my eyes out on this video. Some of my joy, um, some of my healing, and, um, and say thank you. Thank you for watching and thank you for being there. Bye.